So chapter three is focused on, you know, more of what we're talking about in terms of uh, ethical hacking and all that, um, network and computer attacks. Okay. Um, malicious software, malware, and the kind of damage, right, uh, those things can do. And then, you know, what kind of tools are available? I mean, you know, how do, how do, how do people who have malicious intent, you know, people who want to do you wrong, right? How do they, you know, how do they attack? What kind of network attack types, right? Um, and then we're going to look at more vulnerabilities, security attacks and vulnerabilities. Chapter three. Um, so the, f the very first line here what does that mean if not network attacks prevent the business from operating what does that mean um uh, of service attack So they, they stop the service. Um, it's like denial. If not, go ahead. Hang on, hang on. If not, go ahead. I mean, a big company like Walmart, uh, for instance, is their uh, system being hacked or their data center being hacked? They cannot, you know, process payment and all that. That can, you know, stop the business from operating. Okay. So you guys are supposed to be having some conversations, discussions with your group during the week. So I want to see how current you are. Give me an example in the last week, two weeks, of a company that was attacked and affected the, the you know, the company's work. You know, prevented them from operating. You know, to an extent. Give me an example. Do an example for me. Uh, the article we did, we didn't cover that. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. All right. The pipeline. So you don't have any example? Do you have any example of any company, pipe, organization, pipe. in the in the last one week, right? If not, that uh, got on oh, the last two weeks, on oh, the last yeah, one month. Yeah, the Boston. Um, I forgot. Um, the the system that do the. Ah. Uh, I forgot. You know how you do you, you, you do uh check you check your car? I forgot what it is. You gotta do it, it costs twenty thirty five dollars to do the it. Inspection. What yes. what are you what are you saying? No, can I'm you trying speak to like yes, can you I'm trying. imagine you're at a job imagine you're at a job interview, right? Yeah. Don't say I don't know. Just tell us exactly what it is. I didn't say I don't know. I'm Let's trying try. to come up with the name. I'm trying to come up with the name, okay. but I know it happened. Okay. The inspection what, system. What exactly? What? The inspection what inspection system in Massachusetts. They were yeah. hot. So, you know, I stopped them from operating. It was about a month ago. Okay. So that is an example. Okay. What's the inspection system in Boston? What does that mean? Well, I'm not sure how it works. So, you know, uh, I mean, I, everybody know how it works. Uh, do you, you, have, just do you go, have a car? You just go and inspect your car. You inspect okay, your Eva, car. Do you have a car? Yes, I have a car. So okay, so you know how it works, right? But no, the way you ask the question is like the how I see it is like you want me to know exactly what is going on in the system. So the inspection system is you go ahead, you inspect your car, you know, they put in the system that your car was inspected, and then they give you, you know, the sticker when it will be expired. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what it is. So it was a. Uh, I think it was, well, not I think, it was hacked, and then it stopped them from doing inspection. I'm not exact to be more specific what exactly stopped in the system, but they were hacked. So people who, so when it was hacked and the system was down, did you have to pay for your inspection? Like, or you could just do it for free during that time, right? Uh, I don't think anybody was able to do it because they weren't, you know, it, although All right. you went, they were, there was no way for them to update that you did your inspection. Okay. That's a good one. Michael, give us an example of a company that was attacked 
in the last week, two weeks, one month? Um, he just said uh, the RMV site. Um, but, uh, that doesn't count because he said it already. Give us a new one. So the pipeline I've been reading about, but I not much. I have Apple News that they always show the uh, the pipeline being hacked and uh, how the hackers got into it to seize. Was the was it a company that was hacked or just a pipeline was attacked? Uh, is it was a company that was hacked, but uh, what's the name of the company? That's what uh, um, I don't have the name of. That's what you're. That's what you're googling right now. I'm going to check Apple News right now and <laughs> see. They always. That's update. what you guys. That's what you guys are supposed to do during the week with your with your teammates. Is to have conversation. When we discussed was uh, something about uh, uh, email vulnerabilities, malwares, and how workers use emails. How they use work emails okay. for their personal, and then who can put a company at a, a risk. So that was what we actually discussed. We didn't discuss. It. Okay, very good. What's the thing? Give us one more company that was um, attacked and affected the business. Yeah, the only one I know was the pipeline. Like the That's guy. the only one you know? So, I mean, the current one. Okay. All right. Well, so you guys are right. When a, when a network attacks a company, right, it, it certainly affects the business. Um, the Colonial Pipeline, Michael, right? Okay. Thank you. They had to pay out a lot of money to get their stuff back. And they didn't get all their stuff back. They got some. Cut them about 4 to $5 million to do that. Right? So when you attack a company, it affects the company. They lose something. And, you know, your job one day might be to come up with solutions, right? So that companies don't, you know, have all these losses. Um, and so you're going to have malicious software, viruses, worms. And when we talk about the goals, right, what is the point? Well, the point is to make some money, to make a lot of money, right? I mean, if you can sit down in your, I don't know, in your basement, maybe, and hack into a company from around the world and make $5 million, you feel like that's all you want to do. So the goal is to make money. The goal is to steal, basically. That's what it is, right? That's the goal. So your job is um, to understand how these people operate, some of the ways that they operate, and what you can do when you're in the industry, right? To prevent such losses. So we have examples of, say it again. All attacks uh, aim at making money. Because uh, I read one, uh, one of the questions I answered in the article, the reference I gave was, it was just because the guy in British, uh, in UK, like the pregnancy women and pregnancy department of the one of the hospitals, he wasn't, the aim wasn't to make money, but he was just upset because he knew two people who went to do an abortion. So he hacked into those departments just to leak all ladies who have visited the hospital within that time frame and give out the names and yeah, who they are just to publish to show. Yeah. So all right. So you're right about that. Um, they might not all have money as their aim, but m but money, I mean you're gonna find probably a higher percentage, that's the goal. Okay. I mean, you're right in the case of that hospital, right? In fact, there was a lady who hacked into um, Capital One. That was about, I think it was middle of last year. No, I think it was about two years ago. And she said her goal, all she wanted to do was to expose the IT, uh, expose the security or the lack of security on that system.
that you guys are not so secure. I just want to prove to you that you're not so secure. That's all I, that's what, that's, that's my point here. So maybe she wasn't necessarily looking for money, but just to embarrass those guys, you know, mess them up. So you're right. Did she get a Maybe job? not always to make, she ended up in jail for a long time. She was just testing. She should have gotten a job. No, I, we said last week, right? You don't get a job after messing up. So you got you got to take care of that idea. You know, getting a job. Oh wow, you hack into our system. We're going to employ you next week. Maybe in the movies, right? <laughs> All right. Um. So viruses, right? Uh, I want to talk about examples here of email issues. So, uh, Michael, what was that example you were talking about, what you guys discussed on the email? Uh, tell us about it. Was it Michael? Yeah. This Somebody year. said you... Yeah, yeah I what said, was the discussion uh, so you guys had about emails? Yeah, email security and how uh, companies are going to cope with how... The, it was a situation where the person, like the write-up was all about <clears throat> how insecure it is uh, about email security and how they will cope. Okay. So if you go into, um, anyway, let's keep going. So what we see is that this is one of the ways, right, where it says here, email senders use social engineering to lure a user, a user to follow a malicious link, right? And when you look at um, statistics out there, I mean, IT professionals will tell you that they spend maybe 50 or 60% of their time dealing with email problems, right? Dealing with emails and um, I think a, a good question we should talk about right now is what kind of people fall for email scams? You know, there's a link. You say, click this link to redeem your $5 million coupon from Walmart. What kind of people respond to that? Cindy. Old people. Or, or why do people respond to that, should I say? Old people, right? Yes. You're sure it's just old? What do you mean old? Is there an age you can give me for old people? Above 50. Oh, 50 year old people are old people who click on emails, right? Yeah. Okay. No 20 year olds, no 25 year olds. I mean, they do too, but it's not as high as old people. How do you know that? Have you, is there some, something you read that says, oh, it's mostly people who are over 50 or That's not the 20 estimate. year olds? Based on what? My family. Oh, your family. Tell us about it. Yeah, your mom, like, your dad, your grandma. Yeah, like... They'll like believe anything that National Grid sends them. And then Okay. Like they'll be like, Oh, you owe a bunch of money right now. And if you don't send us your information, we're gonna cut your gas off. And they believe it. Have they actually ever had to pay out money one of those scams? They almost did it. And you were there to save them just in time. I thought it was so dumb. Okay. So the question is, why do you know people fall for it? What is it? What is in these messages that people fall for? Because it's our job, right, to protect our employees, our staff, our families. So let's look at the reverse side. Why? What is it that makes people vulnerable to this kind of this kind of um, should I say activities? Angel. 
people who are vulnerable to phishing? Yeah. Why do people respond? What is it? What is a lot what of is the, times, the, the the link? What's the draw? Um, it could be different things, but sometimes the link looks legitimate. Like they could have it, you know, if it's a, a site that takes you somewhere else, right? It'll look like maybe one or two letters is off, right? So you just take, you take a quick glimpse, you look at it, and you're like, oh, it looks legit, and then you click it, and then bam, now you have you know virus in your system, or um, or they could do a uh, was a key logger. Sometimes they do, um, but that that's you know one way. You know, use some companies do those like test ones from the security team to kind of you know introduce the um, what is it the like they try to bring awareness to the to the employees, so the security team will send it out. And I like, for example, I get those, and I even I have I've clicked it by accident, like because I take a quick look, and then it goes, "Hey, you should take this security, you know, read the security thing to make sure you don't get fished in the future." And um, <laughs> and it's very you know it's very easy even for someone younger, um, because it does a lot of the times they make it look really legitimate. So you're saying that it's not just the 50 year olds, right? No, but I, I, I see what Cindy is saying. I, I, I think maybe the social engineering aspect might be like right there where they said, oh, if you don't pay this, your bill will be cut off or something. Yeah. I can see things like that being more towards the older crowd because, you know, to get an 18 year old to do that, like, you don't have a house, so like you don't have key. <laughs> exactly, there's no house, no bills, right? Like, what you yeah. mean? You know, so that it wouldn't work on a college student or something like that. But they can, they can do it, you know, with efficient scheme. So what you're saying, right, Cindy? I think to, to, to restate what you said, maybe it's not about age, but about responsibility. People who have stuff to lose or to give. Right? How does that sound to you? You have stuff to give. You have a car. You have a house. You have kids. You have parents. You have property. Right? So you've got stuff that you can lose. Yeah. Exactly. And so if they, and so if they know that you've got stuff to give or that you can lose, then they're coming after your stuff. And now, if your mom gets an email or something in the mail that says, we're going to cut off your, you know, we're going to cut off your electricity if you don't pay your bills. Well, your mom doesn't want, you know, everyone to have, you know, like, you know, blackouts. Like, hey, okay, I'm going to pay the bill, right? So she's probably not thinking about the security of it. She's like, hey, I'm going to protect my family. Okay, we're going to pay the bill. So, so maybe that's something that we can look at, that when you're trying to, you know, set a policy or, you know, help out in your company, you're looking at these guys target people who have stuff, right? Who have something to give, right? Or something to lose, maybe I should say that. Something to lose, right? Um, and so if you have something to lose, then you become vulnerable, right? You become vulnerable um, to stuff like this. Of course, um, it's not always just through emails. You can get, you can get, you know, like information coming through the regular mail, through the post office, right? Coming to you. Um, okay, what else? Let's talk about this a little bit more. Surafel, why else, you know, why else do you think that people fall for this kind of scams. I mean, imagine yourself, your, you know, your job is as a security tester to advise people, right? Let's, let's, talk, let's, forget, about, let's forget about professionals. Let's, let's talk about maybe you're going to a retirement community, right, where you have older people, you know, grandmas and grandpas. If you had five minutes to give them a, a, you know, a speech about security, what would you say, Surafel? Um, so about security, 
I think uh, yeah about how to safeguard your information how to watch out for things that are scams or stuff like that what would you say to this group of people so i would say um there is always a scam like there's always people out there who who try to uh, uh who try to like uh, always try to get into uh, people's computer system so in general like i would say like uh, I, i would just remind people to like click uh, the basic basic uh, security uh, you're not answering the question give us five things give us the first one what are five things that people can do or watch out for or what kind of practice right to protect themselves and not to fall for this kind of thing what are five things that are like actual bullet points of things to do here are five things you can do give me one okay have a strong password for your no 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 passwords i mean when you go to a retirement home are you going to find computers there no those guys don't deal with computers so you're dealing with a different a different group of people not people in an office in the school no all the people who don't deal with computers but still get scammed do you guys understand yeah uh... your job your job is not always just to professionals your job might be to the whole community i mean a, a retirement home can hire you as an IT person so what kind of service can you offer there you understand yes. so give me one um so uh, don't just ignore those uh... ignore it why what do you mean just ignore it mm. these guys don't have anything else to do throughout the day they are not going to ignore it they want to see what's there so is that a strategy ignore it because, okay because <laughs> because um something that's like legal uh, legitimate uh, it has like uh, an address and uh, like uh, like legal address in like legal document if they are looking for something from you uh so in general so are you saying that are you saying that they should verify some of the information right that they find in this document yes but in general i would say like uh, there's always a scammers out there so uh it's 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 like um, it's very normal to get like uh, this type of like scams it doesn't matter like whether it's an email or a phone phone call uh or when you look for uh, when you just visit the websites you see like um links and stuff like that so i would just in general i would just say like turn turn for this well we want to talk about strategies here strategies. not just saying not just saying you know there's scams out there okay yeah but what do we do about it how do we help ourselves what strategies can you propose If you say when you get a document say you've won 50 56 million dollars verify a few things in that document that's a good strategy what's the second strategy here uh Fanzing what's another strategy that you can advise people what can they look out for or what can they do mm can they do uh I don't know how that is about. What can I get there? You are not allowed to say I don't know. You got to try. Uh, yeah, but uh, one day know. you're going to be on the job, right? So think about it. How can you use your knowledge to advise people? Um. If your dad or your grandpa, right, mm-hmm. says I just got this in the mail. I won 56 million dollars. I just have to send them 1000 dollars and I'll be all set. What would you say? Call the police. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just, What? I just I don't know. I I just 
I only see color freeze, I don't know. Uh, I remember those. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah, I, I, I know. I heard An about it. An older person tells you they just got, they just won all this money in some, you know, it, it came through the mail. He told them they just won all this money. All they have to do is send one thousand dollars, and they can claim their, you know, claim what they won, claim their winnings. What would you say to the person? I, I think I would tell them there was, uh, there was a cheat. They, they didn't care about it. How do you know it's a trick? What would you, what, what would you look out for? I want you to be very detailed here, right? You are, yeah. This is what we call an education. You are in school for a reason, to be able to think about stuff and come up with solutions. So, um, what would you tell this person exactly? The firewall is is warning. The the mail is have some virus. I don't know. It's, How it's can fine, you have but... a virus when you go into your mailbox and see mail? How's there going to be a virus in there? Oh yeah. Uh... We're gonna come back to you. Uh, we'll the scene. Okay. Help us out here. You're advising people on what to look out for. What strategies would you propose? Someone tells you they just won $56 million. All they have to do is send $1,000 to this address, and they're all set. They're going to get their check the next week. First thing I would tell them, there's nothing for free. There's no such a thing as free money. It's enough. All right. um, second thing is have witnessed stuff like that before where they send my friend checks and ask them. So I would definitely think it's not legitimate, you know, and then I would advise them do not send your information and don't even try to. Yeah, but what, what advice are you going to give? You just say, don't send any money. Why? How do you, how do you let this person understand that this is actually not for real? You know, think about it a little bit deeper. All right. Why would you send money to get money? Now, because That's it a good does. Question. Yeah, it does happen all the time, you know. Um, I'll I'll just tell him to. So how, like, what does he know about the person that he's receiving the money? I'll That's a great him, point. Yeah. That's a great and point. Just, how much do you know about the other person? You know, telling you about this, right? That's a great point. Okay. Yeah, but if you have says, to. You go ahead. Yeah, if you say that's my aunt or my uncle, or whatever. So at this point, I can't really tell them to throw the checks or whatever. So I will have to go with what he's saying. But otherwise, I will tell him. I will suggest him not to do anything with the check. It's just like throw it away. Because it's a All right. Besides saying throw it away, you give them strategies. What do you know about this person? Have you verify? You have to verify first, right? Verify. Maybe there's an address there. There's a phone number, right? Verify before you take action. See, when you guys get on the job, you're going to actually need to work to get paid. And how do, you, how do you add value to yourself is by bringing solutions to problems. You've got to think about solutions to problems. That's how you get a job and, you know, you kind of get promoted on the job. Is when you bring solutions to So what we're talking about now is solutions to problems. Right? Cindy, I'm going to come back to you. Because you gave us an example of maybe your parents, your mom, or somebody, you know, falling for these scams. So, what kind of suggestions do you give them? Or um, do you just say, "Oh, I'm sick of you guys"? <laughs> no, uh, if it's like, more? if it's for example, National Grid, they will never send you a letter asking for money. They and they won't cut it off right away. They usually take a long time to cut it off. So if they're yep. asking for money, it's not true. All right. So how do you convince them not to respond? 
or you just lay out all these facts for them and they're like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, they're pretty smart. So yeah, they <laughs> understand. They usually just throw it away. Or if, okay. or they don't pick up the phone anymore. Because we have a scene in the house. Yeah. Okay. Those are good strategies, right? You explain to them, well, look out for this here. Look out for this part. Look out for that part. Does it have this? Does it have that? Does it have this thing? Does it have this logo, right? Okay, let's call the number and verify. You don't have to send anything yet. Nothing wrong in calling the number. You can call the number to verify, you know? You can call the number if you're not sure, if you feel like, you know, I don't want, I don't want to miss out on a good thing here, right? Um, but you want to verify, which is a great idea, and then you take action. Don't take action right away. So these are things that, you know, if you, if you, um, you know, look at the news like you do every week with your team, you're going to see that the most people fall for stuff. One of the major companies that was affected, I think it was JBS, the meat company, right? There was a VPN that wasn't, you know, they didn't pay attention to the VPN. It wasn't properly secured. Right? That's a vulnerability. Um, all right. So ransomware, that's a big deal, right? Ransomware, um, you know, locks down the system. What's the solution? What's a solution to ransomware? Angel, what's the solution to ransomware? How can people not get affected when their files are locked down? What do you know? Um, I mean, I know a lot of companies have had to pay to actually get back in their systems. Because once it's, you know, once, once the ransomware, the virus is actually in the system, it's very complicated to get it out. Um, and pretty much they can, you know, they'll say, hey, I'll, we'll delete the data, you know, if, if you don't give us the money. So there's really no, I don't think there's really an option here. I think like most, most end up paying. Okay. That, that is a, that is after the whole incident has happened, right? How about prevention? What strategies can you think about, you know? that this stuff doesn't even happen in the first place. They don't fall for it. They don't get affected by it. How about that? Any ideas along those lines? Um, I mean, they have to Let me see if I can pull up something for you guys. They have to prevent the, the virus from getting in there in the first place. Like it's fake, not a, well, fake website. let's look at this. Let's look at this, um, this actual examples that happened, right? So this was um, a few years ago. Uh, where is it? Okay, right here. Okay, so here's the, here's the, it's like the tale of two institutions. Okay, so look at this here. Uh, where is it? Okay, this is not the actual story I'm looking for, but basically there were two schools, one in um, Pennsylvania, right? And the other one in the Netherlands. So I think maybe we can find it here. Okay, look at this here. Look at what it says right here. Right? Um, the Pennsylvania school, they had backup versions of the most critical information and was able to restore access to the vast majority of the impacted files without engaging or paying the intruder. 
So essentially, you have to set up the policies like having backups in order to be able to do something like this, which not all companies do. But do you know that this is like the number one top security recommendation, right, to avoid falling prey to ransomware? Now, it's not saying you don't get attacked by ransomware. You may not be able to prevent that, but you can prevent the loss of having to pay and all that stuff when you have backup, effective backup. And that's what, this, that's what these guys did, right? So the worst case scenario, you're gonna have some downtime when you try to restore your backups, but you have the backup, which helps, which helps big time, right? Because that's what ransomware is, right? It's like having, you know, the keys to your house or your apartment and you have just one key, right? I mean, Angel, if you lose that one key, you're in big trouble, right? Yeah, that's why you so gotta make a copy. <laughs> you, exactly. So you make a copy, right? Um, so you lose one key, you're like, oh, no big deal, right? Kind of like the same idea. Sounds so simple, but it's, it's, it's highly effective, highly effective. The idea of file backups, right? Um, I mean, I experienced this myself personally, right? Where we didn't, this was not even, it wasn't even about ransomware. We had a, a power outage, right? And when the, when the light was restored, um, I think there was a spike or something like that. And it literally fried our servers. So, and we didn't have backups to our files. So this is a, this is a real thing, right? This is a real thing. Um, so why more companies are not doing that, um, it's, it's quite amazing. So that's a, that, this kind of stuff has to be, like it says here, we are reviewing our policies and continuing to enhance the security of our information systems. And that's a key strategy there that companies uh, you know, should be using. All right. So if you look at the book, you're gonna see different types of viruses and how they um, impact computer systems, right? When you do, when we look at, um, maybe by t tomorrow, right? Uh, we're here tomorrow. We're gonna look at uh, some of the examples we see in, uh, in Cengage, in MindTap, of the files that are attached to emails that can damage or compromise a computer system. When we talk about links, right, links, some files can be embedded in those links to do serious damage uh, to computer systems, right? So, so the activity of viruses is a, is a real thing. And you, you know, you're gonna see from the attacker's perspective, right, what kind of files, examples of files that you can create if you wanna cause some real trouble in a certain network or in a computer system. So, uh, these are all examples of malware, malicious software, viruses, worms, uh, Trojan programs, right? Uh, does anyone know the story of um, the Trojan horse? Like, where did this stuff come from? Anybody ever heard of the story the of the movie? Trojan horse? Does what movie is that? With the, oh, the movie? Or oh, I think you meant the the beginning of the Trojan horse. Yeah, I mean, the idea of um, Trojan horses and viruses, where'd they come from? The movie. What movie? <laughs> well, what this, movie is that? This is a, I don't know if it's a Greek event, but it's a, happened in the past. Where, okay, yeah, it, what was the story? Uh, I think it has to do with one of the, 
think it was a king and it was a woman that they took um, from a different um, ruler. And because he was holding them, they had an idea to get in the city that where she was captive. And um, essentially they put, they brought a horse as a gift. And they and the soldiers were actually within the, the the big horse itself. And then, you know, at nighttime comes around the, the things in the middle, you know, the middle of the city, and then they the soldiers sneak out and then they go and kill everybody. <laughs> okay, well that's that's one version. Uh, and you know, it's kind of like similar to that. But you see the whole idea of the Trojan, like you said, it's it disguises itself as a good thing, right? So how many times do you go online to download a free program, right? Oh, download that for free, for free, for free, and hidden inside those programs are potentially harmful, um, you know, files or something. So, so a Trojan horse, it looks like a good gift, looks like a gift, like something wonderful, but inside, embedded inside that horse, so to speak, um, is not very good stuff at all. All right. So when we refer to Trojan horses, that's what we're talking about. Um, you see, disguise, disguise. It disguises themselves as useful programs, but in fact are not. They can install back doors and repeatedly attack the system repeatedly. Right. Um, All right, so we said this is all part of malware, um, you know, viruses, worms, Trojan horses, spyware. Spyware, um, you know, being able to access confidential financial data, passwords, pins. Once your computer gets affected or infected, then you're vulnerable to all this kind of activity. Uh, key strokes, right? Somebody mentioned key loggers, right? Uh, when your system is compromise, right, when you use your your keyboard, right, every time you type, your information can be recorded, right, and all kinds of nasty things can be uh, used against you. Same thing with ads and adware. All right, so just to wrap this up, uh, so it's, 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 a, it's a tough task. Right, because you're constantly having um, malicious actors coming up with all kinds of strategies and all kinds of new ways uh, to deceive and infect systems, right? But we have things that we can do, like we just said. We just looked at uh, backing up uh, major critical information or antivirus programs. I mean, every computer, every laptop should absolutely have antivirus. Right, just as a first layer of defense. And then education, just like Cindy said, talking to your family, educating people. You don't do that. You don't do that. You have to look out for XYZ. Don't take that action. Constantly educating people about what they should and not be doing. It's a useful tool, education. It's a useful tool. When you're, when you're talking about, uh, you know, security um, and, you know, protecting your system. All right. So we're going to kind of wrap it up there, and then we'll continue tomorrow. We're here back tomorrow, right? Tuesday, same time, Monday and Tuesday. All right. Um, let's look at the attendance today, and then we can wrap this up.